Hello and welcome to ATI 4640. In this session we will continue addressing project management tools and techniques that will assist in monitoring and controlling project progress. The PERT can be also called the network diagram and the project activity network diagram can be expressed in two ways uh, either the uh, with activity on node diagram or activity on arrow diagram. The first figure shows a sequence of activities uh, expressed in both uh, approaches. Um, it is required to complete activity A to start with activity B and to uh, complete B to start activity uh, C. Uh, this is in the activity on node diagram and this is the activity on arrow uh, diagram. In the second figure uh, activities A and B are both required to be completed to start activity C and this is how it's been represented on activity on arrow diagram. In the third figure activity A is required to be completed to start both B and C. Uh, the same it's been represented here in the activity on arrow diagram. In the fourth figure, both activities should be completed to start activity C and D. So we need to finish A and B to start C and D. Uh, D needs both and C needs both. And this is the representation uh, using the activity on arrow diagram. In the last uh, figure, activity C uh, requires or required A and B to be completed while activity D required uh, only B to uh, be completed uh, to uh, get started. And this is the representation on activity on arrow diagram. In this figure, um, A, uh, activity A is required to be completed to start B and C then uh, both B and C uh, should be completed to start D. In all cases you notice that the activity on the arrow uh, requires uh, more nodes sometimes uh, and uh, dummy activities uh, to be explained so uh, it depends on what type of um, diagram you're developing but you need to add uh, either a dummy or um, a node or both just to explain it on the activity or arrow diagram. Uh, but uh, um, overall it will be the project manager uh, decision to select the method uh, that will be proper for the uh, uh, project or that's been preferred by the project manager uh, uh, himself or uh, herself. We will take a details example using the activity on the node approach. Uh, we have a series of eight activities named and described as given in the, the table here. Um, in addition, the uh, predecessors are listed in the last column as you can see here. Um, the predecessor list will provide the list of activities required to be completed to start the next activity. Based on the table, both activities A and B can start at the same time, so we have no problem with starting A and B at the same time uh, in the diagram. And again, you know, we are using the um, activity on node network diagram as an example. Activity A should be completed to start activity C, while we need to complete both A and B to start activity D. Once we complete activity C, we can start with E and F. Uh, once we complete um, uh, D and E, we start activity G. Uh, once F and G are uh, completed, we can start activity H. Uh, this diagram shows the same example, but using the activity on the arrow uh, approach and as you can see we need to uh, label the activities on the arrow to uh, know exactly what uh, we're doing and we need to add uh, dummy activity here to explain how um, 
um, uh, we can move from one node to another or from one activity to another. To perform the critical path analysis, we need to understand that the critical path is the longest path through the network, and that's what constrains the project uh, length or project duration. The uh, critical path is the shortest time in which the project can be completed. We cannot uh, crash it more because it depends on these critical activities to be finished for the project to be finished. So that's the shortest that I can do. And at the same time, it will be uh, the longest path through the network uh, to be completed. Any delays in the critical path activities, it will delay the project. Uh, critical path activities have no slack time and that's why they are critical and they affect any delays will affect the uh, project duration. Using activity duration and just adding that duration will result like um, 25 weeks. So if you just add uh, the duration for each activity, uh, if it says two weeks for activity A, three weeks for B and add, it might be 25 weeks, but this is not uh, the right uh, thing. Um, uh, with a sequence of activity and using the critical path methods, uh, we will get different length uh, for the project duration. Uh, there are also other terms that uh, need to be defined uh, in a critical path analysis uh, to understand how uh, to do the process or how to proceed with the analysis. Uh, for each activity, we need to identify the following. We need to identify the earliest start, earliest finish, latest start, and latest finish. What does that mean? The earliest start means the earliest time which an activity can start assuming all predecessors have been completed. When can I start that activity assuming that everything needed, everything required uh, to be done is already done and I'm just waiting on that uh, process to start. So this is the earliest time that I can start. The earliest finish is the earliest time at which an activity can be finished. I can complete it without any problem. The latest start is the latest time at which an activity can start so as to not delay the completion time of the entire project. And the latest finish is the latest, latest time by which an activity has to be finished so as uh, to not delay the completion time of the entire project. If you look at the definition of those, you know that what we're looking for is um, Slack, do I have time, extra time that I can play with to finish the activity or I'm just, you know, um, strict on the time and I need to finish within the duration, the given duration for that activity. And that is the problem that we are trying to define here. Uh, each activity will be presented by a circle or a rectangle. It's up to you. It doesn't matter the shape. Uh, but it needs to include the name of the activity, the duration, the start, and the finish. And as we stated before, we have the earliest start, earliest finish, latest start, latest finish. So all this information has to be included within the network diagram activities. The analysis will start with the first event and work forward. So we we'll start with the first one and work forward. The earliest start time uh, rule will assist in defining the beginning of the second uh, activity. Uh, if an activity has only a single immediate predecessor, its early start equals to the finish of the predecessor, the early finish of the predecessor. If an activity has multiple immediate predecessors, its early start is the maximum of all the early uh, finish values of its predecessors. Uh, the rule for the earliest finish time is the earliest finish time uh, of an activity is the sum of its earliest start time and its activity uh, time, duration time. Uh, for example, uh, if activity A starts from zero, the early start will be zero. Uh, so if the duration of the activity is two weeks, the early finish will be uh, the early start, which is zero plus two, 
and that is uh, two. So uh, that means that the early finish is uh, after two weeks for activity A. Implementing the same rule to uh, activity B uh, will result early finish of three uh, weeks. So it will start at zero. Uh, since the duration is three, it will finish, the early finish will be at three. Then activity C, activity D, and remember that activity D will depend on A and B to be done, and since it depends on activity A and B, then we'll take the maximum of uh, the uh, finish time for those two activities, and the maximum is three days, and this is what will constrain us to uh, uh, start D, so we will use it as the earliest start for activity D. So the earliest start for activity D is 3. Completing all activities, uh, that network diagram will look as uh, shown in this figure. Notice that the project duration will be 15 weeks, not just by adding the number of weeks as we saw in the table, and we got 25 weeks. So actually it's not 25 weeks, it's 15 weeks, 15 weeks. To confirm the analysis, we complete a backward past uh, starting our calculations with the last event. The rule of the latest finish uh, time is as follows. If an activity is an immediate predecessor for just a single activity, its uh, late finish so, uh, equals the late start of the activity that immediately follows it. If an activity is an immediate predecessor to more than one activity, its latest finish is the minimum of all late starts values of all activities that immediately follow it. The rule for the latest start time is the latest start time of an activity, uh, which is the difference of its latest finish and the activity time or activity duration. So let's start backward, and uh, going backward based on these rules, we will uh, uh, give us, or that will give us the latest finish of 15 and the latest start of 13. So it's the latest finish is 15, and 15 minus the duration 2, then it's 13. So 13 will be the latest start for activity H. The latest start for H will be the latest finish for F. So we can take the 13 here and put it here. This is the latest start and that will be the latest finish for uh, activity F. Now with duration of 3, 13 minus 3, that will be 10. Moving backward with other activities, we can get the latest finish and latest start for G, E, and C. And notice that uh, in some cases where we have 10 and 4, uh, which is F and E, uh, and those are um, the activities that follows C, then uh, the earliest start for uh, this one will be the early finish, and we'll take the minimum of the 4 and 10, the minimum of 4 and 10, and that will be 4. Here, and that's what will be used in activity C. Uh, completing the backward pass, uh, we can identify what activities have slacks and which ones with no slack. Um, now, remember that this one, look at activity um, uh, B, uh, look at activity D, and you can see that you have slack in this one, uh, so you will know that uh, what has difference, then they have a slack. If the latest uh, finish or um, late start is not the same as earliest finish, early start, then we have slack time. So those activities will have slack time, but the activities that are the same, whether you go forward or backward, are considered as what we call um, critical. So after computing um, uh, the slack time and uh, the uh, 
earliest time, earliest finish, late start and late finish. Uh, actually, the slack time ca can be defined as the length of the time and activity that can be delayed without delaying the entire uh, project. That's the slack time and the activities with no slack are considered as critical activities uh, and they are on the critical path. Uh, that's why we call them the critical path and based on that, the critical path uh, is uh, represented by uh, activities A, C, E, G, and H or on the uh, uh, graphical representation, you can see A, uh, we can uh, identify them with this uh, uh, arrows and you can see A, C, E, G, and H are the activities on the critical path. The critical path method assumes we know a fixed time estimate for each activity and there is no variability in activity times. Uh, PERT uses a probability distribution for activity times to allow for variability. The variability will be represented using three time estimates, the optimistic time, the pessimistic time, and the most likely time. When we say opt uh, optimistic, that means uh, if everything goes according to plan, no problems, that's why we call it optimistic time and that will be recorded. And then the pessimistic time, uh, that will be assuming uh, that uh, there was um, uh, unfavorable uh, conditions that affected the project and it didn't go well, or the duration of that activity and it didn't go well. So there was delays in uh, 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 executing that activity. The most likely time that uh, is, this is the most realistic time or estimate that can be um, uh, for a duration of activity, that's why we call it the most likely. Uh, most of the time it goes um, as planned, uh, it's not um, uh, faster or it's not slower, so it's not optimistic, it's not pessimistic, but most likely, and that's why uh, we call it the most realistic time. Uh, since the estimate follows a beta uh, distribution, and this is like a statistical distribution when you uh, draw the data, when you collect the data, analyze it, and uh, draw the line, you will have uh, some sort of what we call a distribution uh, that these data points will follow, and it's called beta distribution. So the beta distribution is the expected activity time uh, that can be calculated through using a beta uh, calculation and then for that we can use the beta calculation to calculate the mean uh, for uh, the uh, activities. The mean for each activity can be calculated through the formula T is equal to the uh, um, optimistic time plus 4 multiplied by the most likely plus the pessimistic divided by 6 and this is uh, taking the average but using a, a beta distribution approach and this is how they do it when you have a beta uh, distribution. Um, so again you know the formula came from the statistical analysis of beta distribution and it's already been set uh, why did we give more weight for the most likely because it's the most realistic so we give it more weight uh, to have more meaningful mean uh, closer to the most likely than the uh, uh, optimistic or pessimistic and that's how they do it in uh, beta distribution uh, the variance uh, of uh, activity completion will equal to the um, um, pessimistic minus optimistic divided by 6 all uh, squared and this is the uh, variance. Uh, this table shows the optimistic, the most likely, the pessimistic, the expected time, and the variance for the previous example activities that we were talking about. So, for example, if activity A has the optimistic of 1, the most likely of 2, the pessimistic of 3, then we add 1 plus 4 times 2, that's 8, 4 times uh, 2, 8 plus 1, that's 9, 9 plus 3, that's 12 divided by 6, that will be 2. So using the formula, uh, which is um, what we stated for the expected time, uh, then we can get the expected time 
uh, to equal to 2 for activity A and so on we can do it for other activities to get the expected time or the duration for each activity for the variance we use the formula again and we will have the pessimistic minus the optimistic divided by 6 so we have uh, the pessimistic which is 3 minus the optimistic which is 1 3 minus 1 is 2 divided by 6 2 over 6 squared will be 0 0.11 and that's the variance for activity A and we can do it the same for all other activities the variability of uh, the different activities can assist in computing the variability of the project if I know the variability for each one of them uh, what will be the uh, uh, range of variability uh, I can get the variability in the whole project uh, the project variance is equal to the sum of variances of the critical activities the different critical activities within the project summing the activities variances and getting the square root will result 1.76 weeks so this is the variability of the whole project 1.76 weeks uh, Pert uh, makes two more assumptions um, that total project completion time follow a normal probability distribution and that activity times are statistically independent uh, so each activity time are um, independent of each other um, and that's in a statistical way in uh, calculation and uh, statistics uh, we consider that with mean of 15 weeks and standard deviation of 1.76 uh, weeks the normal distribution of the project duration will look as uh, depicted in this figure this is what we call normal distribution so it's normal distribution the mean this is the mean for the uh, uh, project duration so we expect the project duration to be completed in 15 weeks but there is a variability or standard deviation of 1.76 weeks to find the probability that the project can be completed on or before 16 weeks uh, deadline we can use uh, what we call a z value the z value is the uh, value of the normalized distribution which is equal to the due date minus the expected date of completion divided by uh, sigma uh, the standard deviation uh, so 16 weeks minus 15 weeks divided by 1.76 which is equal to 0.57 uh, so this is the v z value uh, is the number of standard deviations that you uh, date or target date lies from the mean or expected date this is the variability from the mean if we take this value uh, and use the tables provided in appendix 1 uh, we can get the probability that the project will finish on uh, or before 16 weeks uh, which is in this case it will be 71.566% uh, uh, or 0.71566 so it's either 71 you can read that as 71% 0.566 or 0.71566 the probability is represented uh, by the area under the curve here where you can see that the variability that it could finish um, um, within 16 weeks so this is the 71% um, that we are talking about with the used techniques the project manager could determine the following so with all what we did with all the uh, uh, critical path uh, method and PERT method and the probability calculation and statistical analysis um, the project uh, the project expected completion time is 15 weeks and this is something that we got from the calculation uh, there is a 71.57 chance or probability that the equipment or uh, the uh, project uh, will be in place uh, or will be done completed by the 16, uh, 16th week deadline uh, there are five activities um, 
A, C, E, G, and H are on the critical path. There are uh, activities B, D, F uh, that are not uh, on the critical path and have slack time and uh, a detailed schedule uh, is available for the uh, management or the client to review or look at if needed. In many projects, the project manager will be uh, faced with uh, a problem in meeting the schedule or uh, that the completing time has been uh, uh, forward or moved forward and the project manager need to finish the project earlier than the schedule. In uh, these cases, the project manager needs to uh, shorten the duration of the project. This is called project crashing. To crash a project, uh, there is a certain factor uh, or factors that uh, should be considered. Uh, we need to consider the amount by which an activity is crashed um, and uh, in fact is per permissible. Is it allowable? Can we do it? Is it feasible to crash that activity? Uh, taking together the shortened activity durations uh, will enable us to finish the project by the due date. And the total cost of crashing uh, is as small as possible. So we need to uh, look at um, the uh, most um, reasonable cost, the most reasonable activity, and if it's permissible or uh, allowable or not to do that. So to crash, uh, the project we need to look at the different activities and see if we can crash uh, some of the activities that will affect the duration of the project and make it shorter. There are four steps that should be followed in project crashing. First we need to compute the crash cost per uh, time period which is equal to crash uh, cost minus normal cost divided by normal time minus crash time. Then using current activity times, uh, fi we find the critical paths and identify the critical activities. And uh, uh, the third step, the project manager will inspect the critical path. If there is only one critical path, then the project manager will select the activity on this critical path that is A, uh, can still be crashed, and B, has the smallest crash cost per period. And that's what we said. Could it be crashed and is it the lowest cost? If there is more than one critical path, then the project manager will select one activity from each critical path, uh, such as that A, each, um, uh, each selected activity can still be crashed and B, the total crash cost of all uh, selected activities is the smallest. Uh, so we have two uh, critical paths, but we can compare um, those critical paths. So once identified, the project manager will crash each selected activity by one period and see which one will be the best option to go with. Uh, the last step will be uh, to update all activity times if the desired due date has been reached, stop. If not, then a project manager will return to step two. So we try one of the uh, activities and we've crashed that activity. We see if it's feasible, we see if it's the minimum cost. Uh, once we do that and we crash it, we look at the overall uh, project duration. Did we reach the goal that they asked us to do? If they want us to finish in 14 weeks, did we reach 14 weeks? Or we still, uh, you know, up to the 15 weeks or 14 and a half? Uh, if we need to do another activity or uh, crash another activity, then uh, we will look at other activities and try to crash that activity to meet uh, the requirements. Once we meet the requirements, we stop. If we did not meet the requirements, then we need to continue until we reach that uh, requirement of uh, the new due date uh, that's been changed. Uh, this table shows the previous example used in critical path calculations with the crash cost for each activity and you can see that um, you know with the crash cost calculation you can see that activity A has the lowest crash uh, cost and of course it is on the critical path so we can start with that and if it doesn't work we can uh, move to another one and again you know um, F has lower uh, cost, but 
remember it's not on the critical path so um, um, crashing it might not affect the uh, length of the project and that's why we start always with the uh, critical path activities uh, for example crashing cost of activity B will equal to 2000 per week based on the provided formula so this is uh, uh, the calculation on how we got the 2000 per week for um, for example activity B so it will show you that the crash cost is 34,000 uh, the normal cost is 30,000 the normal time for B is 3 the crash time is 1 so if you divide the 4000 difference divided by two weeks you will get 2000 per week and this is the cost for crashing activity B from uh, previous slides uh, we can summarize the advantages of PERT and CPM as follows uh, useful when scheduling and controlling la large project uh, straightforward concept and not mathematically complex as you saw uh, graphical networks uh, help uh, highlight a relationship among uh, project activities uh, critical path and slack time analysis uh, help uh, pinpoint activities that need to be closely watched that they are that uh, are considered critical project documentation and project and graphics point out uh, who's responsible for various activities uh, applicable to a wide variety of projects and useful in monitoring not only the schedules but costs as well uh, associated with each activity uh, while the PERT uh, uh, or the limitation of PERT and CPM can be summarized as follows uh, project activities has to be clearly defined independent and stable in their relationship if we have any uh, continuous changes or um, unknowns or it's not uh, clear then we cannot uh, define it or we cannot use it as we did uh, the uh, precedence relationship or predecessors must be specified and networked together uh, time estimates tend to be uh, subjective and are uh, subject to fund, uh, uh, fudging uh, by managers so um, it might change uh, based on the manager request um, again it depends on the uh, using the uh, optimistic pessimistic or most likely uh, time to do the project um, there is an inherent danger of too much uh, emphasis being placed on the longest or critical path so we need to also be careful of that as an example of a software package uh, Microsoft project management uh, is um, one of the uh, famous software packages that's been used which can be provided by the college for free uh, if you want uh, you can download it and install it on your machine and play with it um, the uh, left side uh, here um, it lists the activities and sub activities uh, and this is what we call uh, the work breakdown structure so this is the representation of the work breakdown structure and you can see the activities A, B, C, D, E, uh, F, G and H the um, example that we were talking about and um, the right side represents the Gantt chart of these connected and sequenced activities and will show you um, the percentages on how much what was completed in addition you can display the network diagram showing critical path activities uh, in red so that will show you the critical activities uh, that we uh, addressed in the example uh, using Microsoft you can track the percentages of activity completion um, again you know it will show you how much has been completed by each activity the resources assigned and the cost associated with each activity that will be all for this session if you have any questions or concerns uh, please feel free to uh, um, use the provided channels to communicate with me and I will be more than glad to address your questions and concerns thank you and have a great day